Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt. May we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 5. Having brought the apostles, the captain of the temple guard and his officers made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than people. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to God's own right hand as Prince and Savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey God. The word of the Lord. Psalm 150. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
A reading from Revelation. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before the throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the people of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for the fear of the religious authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen 
and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the year 2061, Halley's Comet will come back and visit our sun, provided, of course, it doesn't run into Jupiter or Saturn or Uranus or some other large body or even a small body out there in wherever it lives in the 76 years between visits to the inner solar system. Now, to put that in perspective, 76 years it takes for Halley's Comet to come in and back out and back in again. The farthest of our planets that we learned about when we were children, Pluto, which lost its status, now is a minor planet, the orbit of that planet is 248 years. It takes 248 years for it to go around the sun all the way and back to the beginning. Our planet is only one year to get around. Now, when we were children, we were given pictures of planets and sometimes in science projects you might have made models of the sun and then Mercury and Venus and Earth and Mars and Jupiter and Saturn Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, each one according to its size, the sun the biggest, Mercury pretty small, Earth and Venus about the same size, Mars small again, huge Jupiter almost as big, and so on. Each of those planets, we see them together. And when you look at things like uh, Star Trek, for instance, when on the rare occasion when the uh, spaceship comes back into our own solar system, you see, perhaps sometimes you'll see it passing Jupiter and, uh, or passing Saturn, I guess, on the way in, and there's Jupiter in the background. But the reality is you cannot see one of those planets from another except as a point of light. I mean, Venus and Mars are our two closest planets. They're closer to us than Jupiter is to Saturn. And yet, they're only points of light in the sky. We have no idea how big our solar system is. It's immense. It's huge. Things are so far away. And we have no idea what holds it all together. The force of gravity keeps tugging on each of those planets. The sun holds each planet as it goes around. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. As it goes around, it goes this way, right? If you're looking at it from above, and for some reason, we always look at planets from above. But anyway, it goes around and around and around and is still held by the sun. As each planet goes around, it's affected by the other planets nearby. And these are all things that we've discovered in the last three or four hundred years or so since Sir Isaac Newton, in the purported apple falling on his head, although that's disputed now, as he sat under an apple tree and thought about what holds things together and what attracts an apple to the earth. Every child is born with no knowledge of gravity, but they very soon learn that gravity pulls them to the floor or something pulls them to the floor if they try to stand up and don't do it very well. Gravity's there throughout our lives, and it's there even when we are in a distant spaceship, far from the earth, far from the sun. It's still pulling on us and tugging on us. Gravity affects light as it travels. Albert Einstein suggested this, and now we know it to be true that light from distant galaxies is bent as it goes around other galaxies on the way to where we can see it. And yet, even though we don't understand gravity, even though we can't smell it, 
taste it, hear it. We can feel it. We can't see it. And we can only feel it in that it pulls us down onto the earth. But we can't otherwise feel it. We don't stand here and feel pulled towards another large object. We don't feel pulled to the earth. We just, if we jump, we come down. If we jump off a height, we come down further and faster. With sometimes ill effects. We don't sense it. And yet it's there. Is this anything like our faith in God? The apostles saw the risen Lord, all but Thomas. Thomas wasn't there. And they told Thomas, and they were so excited about what they had seen. We've seen the Lord. And all, not only that, Jesus appeared to Mary. Jesus appeared to a variety of people, but not to Thomas, until a week later. And when Jesus finally came... Thomas, who had doubted, and we, we call him Doubting Thomas because he was, one of the, he was the last of the eleven to see Jesus. Thomas doubted until Jesus appeared before him. And Thomas had said, unless I put my hand in the nail prints in his hands and in the spear thrust in his side, I won't believe. But it didn't seem he needed that when Jesus appeared. He right away said, my Lord and my God. Thomas believed when he saw Jesus. And we don't know, it doesn't say that he put his hands into the wounds of Christ. But we do know that he believed. And he was a very fervent and uh, prolific apostle. Some of the other apostles stayed around Jerusalem, and I'm sure they did a great deal of work there. Thomas traveled as far as India, perhaps even China, and preached the word of Christ to so many people. And the interesting thing is that just like the pull of the planets and the pull of the sun and the pull of our own planet that brings us down to earth, as we call it, just like that, there was the pull of faith and the disciples, the, the eleven, that went and preached and taught and healed, and carried out the work of Jesus, those disciples firmly believed in the resurrection of Jesus because they saw him. And other people believed because of their belief. Now, how do we share the gospel in such a way that someone else believes it? How is it that we believe? How do I know that Jesus was raised from the dead. Well, I'm pretty convinced by the fact that the early disciples, those first 11, saw Jesus, claimed they saw Jesus. We, let's not make assumptions. Let's come at this scientifically. They claimed they saw Jesus and they were willing to lay their lives on the line for Jesus. In our first reading today, we read from the Acts of the Apostles how they were put under pressure of threat of, of imprisonment and physical punishment if they did not deny their faith in Christ. But they could not deny their faith in Christ because what they had seen convinced them. I find that to be convincing. And many people over the centuries have been drawn to faith in Christ because what someone else has told them to be true. But at some point, it comes back to each one of us to make a decision for Christ by ourselves. Jesus said to Thomas, blessed are you, but blessed are also those who believe who have not seen. It comes down to each one of us in our own heart of hearts to make a decision about whether or not we believe the truth of the gospel. Memory is a funny thing. Sometimes events seem to fade away over time. 
Feelings are wispy things. They come one day and they leave five minutes later. But sometimes the memory of a feeling remains. And I think back in my life to those times when I felt incredibly close to God. To times when I was in a church service surrounded by other people who believed all praying together and felt the overpowering sense of the presence of God in the depths of my own soul. And so even in those moments where I don't feel the same overpowering sense of the presence of God, I still have the memory. I still remember when Jesus touched me. When you think back over your life, do you have a time when you remember an inner fire, as Jeremiah called it, a fire within my bones? Do you remember a time when you prayed and knew that God was there? These are things to hang on to in the moments when we might not see God today. These are the things to hang on to in the moments when we're all surrounded by so much that's going on in our lives. Think back to the time when you were persuaded of the truth of God. I like that word, persuaded. Paul uses it in his letter to the Romans, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am persuaded. Paul had an experience with Christ, and that experience lasted him to the day of his death, to the day of his martyrdom. Thomas had an experience, and that experience, the memory of that experience, and his ongoing life of prayer carried him to far lands and carried him through the trials and tribulations of life. There are also times, and there are also people who have no memory of such an experience who believe in God in the same way they believe in gravity. They don't see it. They don't hear it. They don't taste it. They don't smell it. There is no way to sense the presence of God. There's no way to sense the presence of gravity. But the fact that Halley's Comet comes back every 76 years the fact that every year the earth is on the same side of the sun at the exact time predicted helps us to believe in the reality of gravity. And sometimes it's looking at the universe in which we live, in understanding the wonders of creation, the smallest atoms and the parts that make up the atoms and the forces that hold together the parts of the atom, the fact that electrons still go around and the quarks and the quarks that are all within the tiny, tiniest bits of creation, all of those things holding it all together, for some people, is the evidence and the truth that God is. For some people, it's to see beauty and laughter. For some people, it's to watch an animal rejoicing in life or to see another human being survive against incredible odds, to laugh in the face of suffering, to rejoice in the presence of loss, Sometimes it is the faith of others that gives us something to hang on to. We don't need 
to understand God, to believe in God. We don't need to know the answers to trust in God. I trust in gravity. I know I'm not going to float off, even though in my dreams, sometimes I do fly, but I know in reality you cannot jump off the top of a building without serious trouble. I know that gravity exists, and I know that God exists. And it doesn't matter how much or how little I see God. I see the effects of God. I see how God pulls people together. I see how God transforms hearts. I see how God gives courage. I see how God gives faith. I see how God gives hope. And when I see the work of God in this world, it makes me believe. I believe in science. I believe in gravity. I believe in electromagnetic pulses. I believe when I see the birth of a child. I believe when I see the child's first smile and laugh. I believe when I see God's joy in the hearts of others. I believe, as Thomas believed, that Jesus is brought back from the dead, that Jesus has put an end to our sin, that Jesus gives us new life. At the end of our services, we often say that doxology, and it means so much to me because it is so true. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That by his power wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory.
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
in union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gather at any and every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given us this day. And each of us remembers now the blessings you have given us. We thank you that you are with us in this sacrament, and since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all of our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
sposa. <laughs>